Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And welcome to another episode of James DIY Garage. I'm James, and this behind me is my 2014 Maserati Ghibli SQ4. In today's video, we're going to install a JB4 tune kit on my Maserati Ghibli SQ4. Yeah! Again, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like videos on DIY maintenance on Maserati Ghiblis or modding Maserati Ghiblis, please consider subscribing. Smash that like button and hit that bell so you'll be notified of future videos when they come out. Also, leave me lots of comments, questions about the install that I'm doing here. I bought this JB4 tune kit from Burger Motorsports. I'll leave all of their information in the description below. I paid a total of $707 for it. That includes the badges, the decals, and this neat little hat, this neat hat. I also uh, ordered the Bluetooth uh, um, adapter so that I could uh, manage it from my phone. So without further ado, let's get on with this install. This is what the JB4 came in from Burger Motorsports. I already cut the tape. That's so heavy. Pull this out. Packing. More packing. I ordered this with my JB4. This doesn't come with the JB4. You have to order it separately. But, uh. JB4 hat. here more packing and here's the JV4 itself so we open it up it comes with a uh, read me first. I'll read that off camera. I ordered a couple of these. These are badges. I'm going to put one um, on the back of the car below the SQ4 badge. Comes with a few stickers. Or no, it doesn't come with a few stickers. I ordered these separately as well. These, the badges were $4, I think these were $4, the hat was 20 bucks, and these are the stickers that I ordered with it. You can see Burger, Motorsports, it's also got the JB4, these are good for putting in the windows. There's another one, a white one. And this is the uh, Bluetooth wireless uh, adapter here you'll need this if you want to connect it to your you want to be able to manage the uh, JB4 tune from your phone you'll have to download an app from uh, either Apple Play Store or, or Amazon Play Amazon Play Store the app cost $27.99 I believe it is so that'll be an additional cost over the on top of what you've already paid, you know, what you paid for here. This was $104. And here's the JB4 tune kit itself. This box, it's got the connectors. Here's the uh, OBD2 port connector. We need to route this through the firewall. But uh, before we do that, we need to uh, hook this up to this. Now, looking at this, you don't see where you can hook this up. There's no connector for this, which looks like a, uh, a VGA port on a computer. What you have to do is you have to open this up in order to <clears throat> connect this in. 
and we're gonna do that right real quick okay in order to open this up you need a 2.5 millimeter hex bit there's four screws here these other holes that you see here are to mount mount point mount points if you want to if you want to be able to mount it to your car which would probably require drilling holes in your car I'm not going to do that so I'm going to strap it in so let's undo these screws one two Four. Pull the cover off. That's pretty sturdy aluminum. What's neat about this is you can tell it was, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but you can tell it was machined by a computer. This is computer machined so my experience 30 years experience working with computers I'm going to uh, advise you do not touch the chips and do not touch anything back here because you if you could have static electricity in your hands and you might fry one of these chips okay so if you're gonna when you hold it you can hold it by this or this but be careful not to touch any of that, okay? Any of these uh, solder points or the chips themselves, okay? So, we're going to pull out the adapter. And as I said, it looks just like a VGA port on the back of a computer. Plug this in. We get the screws. The screws, you'll need a small screwdriver. Bag is little, can be a pain to open. There you go. They don't need to be tight. You don't want it really tight. You just want it so that it, it's not going to come off. Yeah. That's not going to come off. Okay, so we are going to now place it back in its little Spot here. Okay, but there was a little nib here that fell out when I put this on, but there's a little plug here. You take that out and so that the wire will fit right in there. Mine fell out, fell on the floor, so here it is. And that's what it looks like. So you take that off that was in here. And so it's got a space for the wire, for the Bluetooth wire to fit down in there. Make sure that your grommet here is seated properly. The big opening here goes on the grommet like that. And I'll just help this way here. Okay. There. Now once you get it in right, you should see very little gap here. The screws will take out the rest of the gap. Anybody comment to tell me what they think the torque is on this, on these? <laughs> Come on, start you.
Are these things even starting? This one did. Something not right. Oh, I know what the problem is. I'm using the wrong tip. That's why I'm a backyard mechanic. <laughs> Gotta put the right tip in first. Yeah, that works much better. <laughs> See, if I can do this, anybody can do this. I'm just getting senile from my old age. It gets worse. I'm 60. Maybe when I was 50, I wouldn't have made that mistake. <laughs> you gotta make sure you got the right tip in. Okay. Very tight. Now we're ready to put it in the car. Okay, the connector that you need to do in the back is this one right here. See it right there. Get the camera to focus. And the little yellow thing is push this back. The zip. See the side of this. There it is right there. See the yellow tab there. Come on, focus camera. You can see it back in there. That's what you have to pull in order to get the connector off. This is going to be a pain in the butt. This, by the way, is the wire that goes down to the connector. So when you pull the connector, that'll come up here. You have to route the connector from the JV4 down here and then push it in. So, you do get over here pull this tab like so see that go out then we have to push down on this right here and pull the connector out which is going to be easier said than done so I'm going to need two hands to do this I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> but what I'm gonna probably do is get another screwdriver and push on it from in here. Can't get the camera down in here. So, wish me luck. Here it goes. Eventually. Okay, I got that thing connected. Those are the wires there, but there's the connector. I got it connected, I got it pushed in there. I pushed it until I heard it snap. There's the, the clip right there. My screwdriver is pointing to it. That's the clip. That which, that's If you want to remove this, that's what you'll push on, push, push that way on in order to remove it. But as you can see, it's clipped on. I heard it snap. So I got, this was difficult to do. You have to finagle it down through here. Well, when you, to remove the connector from here, you have to pull it up through here. So you have to twist and turn the connector itself to get it to fit through here because that screws, the screws in the way, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a pain, but you can get it out, I did, because here it is right here. There it is, I got it out without breaking it. You have to be careful of the wires. You don't pull on the wires. You want to pull on the clip, the, the connector itself, because you might pull the wires out of the, out of their um, uh, inserts. There, you might, might pull the inserts out. So you don't want to be pulling on the wires. You want to pull on the connector itself. And I got this connector connected up. 
and I got that one connected in down there. So you have to pull this one out and then putting that one back down in there and getting it connected, situating it, getting it lined up right and then pushing it in with just with screwdrivers. <laughs> and I had to make a special tool. This, um, I had to get a piece of wire and make a little hook tool. Um, I don't have any of those um, um, hook tools, to, you know, the ones that you use to pull O-rings with. I don't have any of those. I got a vise. So I used, I made a little, out of a piece of uh, stiff wire. And it worked. I was able to use it and get that connected. Whew, that was difficult. It was time consuming, took me a while to do it. Um, you gotta have patience. Um, and uh, the ability to use some mechanics language, <laughs> but that on camera so you don't get uh, demonetized. <laughs> but I got it in there, it's connected. And over here, this is the easy one here. That one. That's the easy one. And since uh, the JB, JB4 comes with two connectors, this is the one, the ones with the wires, this is the one that goes on the uh, intake airflow, airflow sensor, air pressure sensor. Okay, this is the air pressure sensor, and that one back there is an air pressure thermom um, temperature sensor. Two sensors in one. So, air pressure temperature sensor. This is your air pressure sensor. Okay, and um, I'm going to mount my J. I'm thinking about mounting my JB4 right here. Just wedge it down in there. I don't think it'll go anywhere. It's wedged in pretty good. Um, this, you have to make sure that it's not touching anything metal, the Bluetooth. So I'm going to wire it to this. I'm going to take the, the air, uh, air filter cover off. I'm gonna route the wires underneath it. And the one that's coming from the firewall will come from back there and over here. So let's get working on the firewall. Okay, gonna have to take this bottom cover off here. So you have to remove this, which is just a button. Comes up like that. Then you've got three T25 torques underneath here. One there, one there, and one there. I believe that's a T25 torque. Is that a T25 torque? No, it's not. You got a T25 torques here and one here. I believe that's all there is to remove the bottom cover. Okay. Let's get on with that. I'm gonna do that off camera. It's hard to get a camera in here. Okay, my bad. There were three torques. There's one here by where the OBD connector goes to, is. There's one here, and then there's one here. And then there's a button right here. Here's, here's the button. Okay, so three P25 ports. There's, or no, these are, yeah, these are torques. P25 torques, and a button, and this thing too. Because it's a button, I guess you could call it a button too. Then it comes off, then there's a connector here that connects right there. You disconnect this, then you can pull this panel out. And put it somewhere else. Okay, once you got the bottom uh, dashboard cover off, you need to remove these two nuts here. I'll do those off camera because I can't hold the phone to do that same time. Okay, that's what it looks behind this plate. You have to pull the plate, this plate off and pull this rubber boot back and it pulls back all the way and you can see that. And you stick a screwdriver in here like that. Pull it back and you can feed the connector through there. So I'm gonna, what I did is, just to make it easier to thread, is I hooked up some uh, um, edge trimmer cord to it, taped it to it, make it easier to fish through. <clears throat> That's what I'm gonna do right now. Fish it through there. Hopefully I can do this on camera. And it'll show up on the other side. I'm gonna have to do this off camera, it's too hard. My arm doesn't bend like that. 
show you the I'll try to show you the finished product. I was able to see it coming through the firewall over there. I used a pair, it was too far down for me to reach in my hand. So I, I used this thing here. Grab her, pretty long. To grab it and pull it through all the way, this of the way. And here it is. I've got it. And all I gotta do is, and there's the cord. There's the, there's the wire. There it is. It's pulled through. Wow. Now I can put that all back together again, underneath. You uh, just put it back together in reverse order that you took it apart. I'm not gonna put it back together on camera. See you on the other side. Okay, that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. You can just take this wire, the Bluetooth wire there, and shove it behind here to hide it. And then when you put the cover on, it'll be back in there. It'll be hidden. You won't see it. Okay, before you put the cover, bottom dashboard cover on, don't forget to connect that connector up over there, back to your cover. Okay, I just wanted to show you the finished product. See back there? I've got the uh, air pressure temperature sensor connected, all hooked up. I've put this one down here, inside here, get it out of the way. And I've uh, used um, ties, nylon ties, to tie it all up and secure it. Here. I ran it underneath. This is the uh, air pressure sensor for the intake. I ran it underneath the uh, air filter here. And I decided to mount the JB4. I just, I just wedged it down in here. It's, it's pretty solid down in there. I like it there better because this, this allows me to uh, run the Bluetooth sensor or adapter over here because this is not supposed to touch any metal. So what I did is I zip tied it to uh, a wire harness here. The OBD2 can, uh, wire runs from down from over there. You can see it go come from, from the firewall over there. I just zip tied it to here and it runs underneath the air, set the air pressure sensors or the air filter as well and to the JB4 kit right here. So that's the finished product. I just wanted to show you the finished product. It's all zip tied, secured. Underneath there, and I like it. I could have, I should have, probably routed this underneath here, through here and up. Could have done that instead, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull that connector over there and redo it. <laughs> With the pain in the butt to do. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. It's fine the way it is. <laughs> Oh, I like it the way it is. It'll work. And that's what it looks with the uh, cover on. Cover hides most of it. But that's obvious. And I'm thinking about putting that JB4, uh, one of the JB4 badges that I, I have two of them. I'm going to put one of the other JB4 badges right here. That would be cool. Okay, I've got everything back together. Got the engine cover on, I'm going to start it up. This is the test. Cold start. See if we get any lights. Uh, we're not going to get lights unless that, until that trunk is closed. And the hood is closed. Hang on. How to do that. Okay, started the car up. Had to re-set uh, the parking brake 
because I had the battery disconnected. Um, no lights. Ready? Okay, so uh, I have to cut the video on my phone and move over to my uh, camera so that I can use the Bluetooth app. So let me do that. Okay, I've swapped over. Still no codes, no no faults, and I uh, having a trouble focusing on that. There we go. Can you see better now? Okay. So I couldn't resist uh, before I went over to get uh, my Canon camera. I had to hit connect. I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. So we missed out on something. We missed the when it first connected, the Bluetooth adapter needed an update. So you tap OK and it goes through the update and updates it and disconnects and then you hit reconnect and it connects up. So for the for my car anyhow, I had to set the boost gauge to boost two to get it to work. So it'll indicate. Oh it's disconnected. Hang on, let me connect. Got to reconnect here. Loading services. Handshake. Connected. Okay, we're connected. So now we see my RPM there. Load. I'm on map one right now. I got the G Force calibrated. What you do is you just double tap it and it calibrates itself. So the map, to change it, you double tap it, and you can select your map. Let's stay on map one. Map saved. So, and the boost is working. I had to put it on boost two. You can see the boost go up. So. Everything seems to be working. Still no lights. So I can't t I can't uh, record a test drive because I've got nothing to mount my cannon to in the car. And I want to be watching this. So I can't record a video and watch this at the same time. I apologize for that, but it's the way it goes. I don't have a mount for my cannon, a uh, car mount for my cannon. I've got a tripod, but not a, not a car mount. Dang, this thing doesn't has a hard time focusing. A little better. Anyhow, everything seems to be working fine. Well, we've got it all installed. I started it up, and it runs fine. No lights, no codes. The hardest part about the install was the pressure temperature sensor in the back. That was really hard. It took me about 30 minutes to get that. Underneath the dash it was a little difficult for me because my I'm 16 my back my, my body doesn't twist and turn like it used to so working underneath the dash was a little difficult for me but I got it done. I wasn't able to do a, a test drive on with the JB4 tune kit because it's windy and rainy outside so for obvious reasons I'm not going to be doing that today um, maybe not even tomorrow uh, but I'm going to leave that for a future video so in my next video I will be testing the JB4 tune kit out on my car. So like I said, click subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I post this next video, the test drive. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Bye.